Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Your word declares we can approach the throne of grace with boldness, knowing that we shall find mercy and of grace, of help in the time of need. We thank you, Lord, this morning that you will give us new grace for this new month in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, the fullness of grace. We have received one blessing after another, Lord. We thank you. You are the God of all grace. May all grace abound upon in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. Dimari hadagustana mala dunandara jarada na mana hadagustana dunandara dimari kastara. We pray, Lord, that your Hallelujah word will minister to everyone, Lord. We already thank you for the word that you have ministered to us. We thank you, Lord. You will calm every storm. Hallelujah, Lord. That is sent across our lives, and you will bring supernatural rest, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let every territory, let every home, let every house, let every household of faith be at rest this morning, for Your name and for Your glory, Lord. Father, continue to minister to us, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a word that we heard. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's open our Bibles this morning. Two Corinthians chapter nine, and the eighth verse. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. The word that God put into my heart is to increase in the grace of God. The word God gave me was to increase. God wants to break the power of stagnation. God wants you to increase this October. God's uh, desire towards His people is that we shall increase. Hallelujah! He is a God of all increase. The Bible says Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in wisdom. Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in favor with God and favor with man. Hallelujah. God wants his children to increase. You just heard about the storm. After a storm, the Bible says Job increased in his cattle. Everything that he had, even a storm cannot stop us from increasing forth for God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So says, God is able to make all grace abound in your life. And what makes us increase is nothing else but the grace of God. Grace, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just because, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, open your Bible in one more scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Just because uh, we hear about grace or read about grace, grace will not increase. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just because you hear about grace or read and study about grace, Grace will not increase in your life. You need to genuinely pray. Bible says, let's approach the throne of grace. Which means you need to be conscious in the grace of God. You need to be conscious of the grace of God. Everybody say conscious. We are at home. Say conscious of the grace of God. You need to always aware that God's grace is powerful in your life. Hallelujah. Only when you know that the most powerful thing in your life is the grace of God. Hallelujah. That's when the grace of God will increase. You need to lift up the name of Jesus. You have to bring Jesus to the center of your life. You cannot uh, separate Jesus from the grace of God. Bible says law was through Moses, but grace came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. So grace came. Grace has a 
you it's closeness the more you are want to lift up the lift up the name of jesus grace will increase over your life blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah glory to god how many of you want to lift up the name of jesus hallelujah the more you say jesus 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 grace will abound in your life hallelujah praise the lord her grace has appeared unto all men the more you want to get closer to jesus hallelujah the thing that brings you closer to jesus is grace that's why bible says increase in grace hallelujah not the knowledge of grace conscious of grace hallelujah stagnation of growth in your life will pull you down the frustration of stagnation is terrible you have to fight the stagnation with grace the enemy of growth is stagnation you know some of you have been born again for 20 years and you know we are still remain in the same place in in life in finances every area of your life either that people coming on sunday there is no no fruit why no grace no fruit no grace no testimony no grace you will not see the work of the lord in your life we can preach we can say amen we can lift up the name we can come together but life is stagnant life is stagnated hallelujah if grace does not increase your weight down and tied down you'll feel bound more than 10000 years ago jesus brought you freedom on the cross of calvary and if you still bound in 2022 that means you're not walking in the grace hallelujah bless of god bless be the name of the lord because grace has not increased in your life you become stagnated hallelujah in business in holiness in workplace in family there is no growth it's very frustrating you see same demon every day you can attend the monday revival meeting with the demons you have to cast that demon out that's what grace is all about you have to cast that demon out and only then jesus will be lifted up hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord so you have to ask the lord 20 years down the line you know if you are fighting against the same pro problems jesus is not glorified you need jesus to be glorified in every area of your life and it takes the grace of god hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah it means you have made advancement when grace is increases in your life you will become free from those bondages hallelujah you cannot sleep with the bondage every day that means grace is not there you can shout how much ever you want grace is not there you can clap how much ever you want grace is not there you cannot live in the same storm every day and cry about the storm and write a story about the storm no you have to trust in the grace of god grace is powerful that's why jesus could sleep through the storm jesus could cast the demon out nothing could intimidate jesus nothing could put him in a corner nothing could put fear into his life he challenged fear he challenged the challenge to he challenged sin he challenged addictions he challenged delay jesus died at 33 finished the work there was no delay in his life hallelujah he could finish the work in time he came on time he left the earth on time because he said i've come here to do the will of god grace enables you to do the will of god it helps you to move forward for the glory of god hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord there was one athlete in kerala who participate who is to participate in the trials for a race you know prior to the trials there was an interview conducted says says and why say ah, why why do you want to be a part of the team he replied i've been an athlete since childhood and during you know my school and college days i want to be a athlete so every time i ran i had never had to look back when asked why he responded because i all i was always last <laughs> <laughs> when i was 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So every time I ran, I never had to look back because I was the last. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that is stagnation. When you are not running as you should. When you are not reaching where you ought to reach. When you are not advancing forward as you should. You are always at last because grace is not increasing in your life. When you grow in grace, it takes you from the last to the first. It takes you from behind to the forefront. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you don't grow, you won't have a sense of fulfillment and st satisfaction in life. You cannot even fulfill the divine purposes in life. You will not have a divine atmosphere at your home. You will always have problem and fighting, you know. Everything happening because of the grace of God. This morning, every fighting at home, every stagnation at home, every kind of block and hindrance at home, every kind of work issues at home, every sickness that is keep attacking you, that means somewhere along the line you have not tapped into the grace of God. You have to be whole by the grace of God. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Grace is appropriating what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. It is a free thing. All that you need to have openness and to receive it. Jacob became Israel. A cheater became Israel. A persecutor became an apostle. Why? Because they were open to the grace of God. When Paul persecuting Christians was met on the day of Damascus, he said, Gee, you know, the great light came and he fell down and he the Bible says, moment he fell down, he said, Jesus asked him, why are you kicking against the God? And he said, who are you, O Lord? He immediately knew it was the Lord. And he cooperated with the grace and became a great apostle. That's why in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He's the maker of men. He's the maker of apostles. He's the maker of men of God. Because of the grace of God, this October, if you really want to be fruitful unto God, you need to allow God's grace to work in you. Hallelujah. We have to advance forward to the grace of God. In the Garden of Eden, when God created man, he said, be fruitful, be multiplied. It is the fuel, grace is the fuel for supernatural growth. Hallelujah. When you want to do something supernatural for God, Grace is the fuel for that. Grace is the fuel. In 1 Corinthians 15, 10, the Bible says, By the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace was bestowed upon me and was not in vain. But I labored more abund abundantly than all. Yet not me, but by the grace of God, which was with me. Hallelujah. He says, I labored more abundantly. Grace is the fuel for supernatural strength and energy. Hallelujah. Some people are always tired, always weak. Hallelujah. Some of you are watching, you know, have 10% of maybe what God has bestowed upon me to do. Hallelujah. I'm meeting enormous amount of challenges on my right, on my left, on my back, on my side. And I'm still able to come up every Monday morning. Some people say, oh, I'm not able to be there because... There are so many of challenges. I got greater challenges. But with the grace of God, I tap into an energy. I tap into health. I tap into wholeness. Because there is a supernatural energy in the grace of God. Christianity is not sitting idle. Christianity is running a race that God has kept for us. Elijah ran. Even when Jezebel intimidated him. Because if somewhere along the line the angel came and gave the bread of grace. It is a super, it's a sign of grace. You cannot be intimidated. You cannot be scared. You cannot be in lack. You tap into the grace of God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 says. Thou therefore my son be strong in the grace of God. That is in Christ Jesus. Grace is the secret of strength. It's, it is not enough to go to a gym. 
the grace of God. It's a secret of fruitful labor. It's a secret of tireless energy. Catherine Kudman, a woman of God, even in her old days, would minister six hours standing on the pulpit. Or Roberts would pray for an entire tent over his lifetime. And to his tent would be 15,000 people. He would minister to 15,000 people, lay hands on 15,000 people till he died. Hallelujah. Sometimes you cannot sleep, pray. You know, all my weekends, I hardly sleep for more than five or six hours in two days. But, you know, I can still have a bath. Come and look into your face. Some of I can't even see the face because you're in your pajamas. Some of you are switched on and sit, sleeping on your sofas. <laughs> if I would, if I, if I would call and ask, "Hey guys, are you there? You know, so and so there." So, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of you just to avoid that embarrassment and not even tuning in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Grace is the secret of, uh, you know, there's a word called the fate. <laughs> it is I N D E F A T I G A B L I T Y. In the uh, fatigal, fatigability, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, which means tireless energy, tireless enthusiasm. Grace is a supernatural drink. Give you a supernatural stamina. So I pray that how much ever your work is this October, how much ever tiring it is sounding, I pray that grace will give you the stamina to make 18 hours, 20 hours. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want to declare. That's what I want to tell you. You have to get into the truth of God's grace. You know what I'm saying? You can do supernatural, amazing, powerful things for the glory of God. Because of the grace of God. Hallelujah. In a car, there is a brake, a clutch, accelerator. Sometimes, you know, you feel like stopping into the brakes. You get exhausted, feel quit. You know, that's the time, you know, you need to, you need to say, I'm going to move forward. Hallelujah. Why, why, why do we need tireless energy? Because it takes energy to weary, weary out and overcome the opposition. You know, grace gives you the resilience to... Handle resistance in life. Between you and the devil, it should be the devil who gets tired, not you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When military training is conducted, the soldiers are told how to keep moving, no matter how tired they are. It is taught in the training that it comes to a point where your mind, your body get tired. And we need to learn to go forward. You know what I'm saying? We are the soldiers of Jesus Christ. You know, we should not get for exhausted, give up. You know, it's the grace of God is the fuel. You should not give up. You know, you'll be shocked in yourself when God's grace abound upon your life. You know what I'm saying? You don't give up. So many people are easy to give up. The way they worship and in the train is like half one hand is like this, one hand. You know, it's so, so giving up posture. Who in the Bible has given up? Hallelujah. I pray that the not giving up grace will flow. Hallelujah. What when the grace increase, you will do what others do in one year, you will do in a day. That's a kind of anointing and releases it. Hallelujah. It's a unmer it's a grease for life. It is the supernatural anointing of God. It's a supernatural favor of God. It's the grease for ease. Hallelujah. May God's grease for ease come. Hallelujah. What others do in a lifetime, you will do in a year. Hallelujah. You need grace and tireless energy to fulfill your destiny on time. It is one thing to succeed, but there's another thing to succeed on time. You need the grace of God for appropriate time to do things. Maybe it's your job. What should you do? You, you should be in 50. You should not be in, in, in 80. <laughs> I pray that kind of bondages and problems to leave your life in the name of the Lord. Under 19 cricketer, you cannot join at 45. It's under 19. <laughs> Sometimes when my children study, I feel, oh my God, that ABCD looks so easy. <laughs> but what's the what's 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 big deal? 
I should, it should have been easy when I was in LKG. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are so many supposed to be married. It's not happening. You need to ask the Lord to grace to get married on time. Hallelujah. October, many marriage takes place in the name of Jesus. No. Sometimes a fight between husband and wife. You need to forgive in that day before the sun goes down. It's a grace for that. But if you harbor it for five years without forgiving, over years there will be a distance in your relationship. Hebrews 12.25, we'll finish it. Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defied. Let no root of bitterness grow within you, spoiling the grace of God, one of the words says. If you do not forgive, grace will not abound in your life. Don't frustrate the grace of God. Do not hinder the grace of God. Do not receive the grace of God in vain. The Bible says, do not spoil the grace of God by harboring hatred, revenge, and unforgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Grace will not abound in your life. Hallelujah. The strength to face anything and overcome. Hallelujah. You need the grace. How do you increase in the grace? Learn the secret of helplessness. Number one, helplessness. A personal sense of helplessness is a magnet for grace and will draw grace to you. There is a saying, when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. You know what I'm saying? God cannot do something for self-sufficient, boastful people. When you humble yourself, God gives grace to the humble. He says, without you, I can do nothing, Lord. Don't try to act strong. No, try to be somebody. To come like a child. Hallelujah, Lord, I need the grace of God to live a Christian life, a holy life, a faithful life, faithful with God, faithful with man, faithful in the church, faithful with my spouse. I need the grace of God. You know, don't try to be a, you know, somebody who's very strong. Number two, heart of generosity. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8 says, but this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according to the, according to as he purpose in his heart, let him not grudgingly or necessity, for God is a God of cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace toward you, that in all, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to do every good work. Generosity will attract more grace of God in your life. When you sow what God has given you for the kingdom, wherever God says, Hallelujah. God will make the grace of God abound in your life. Be a dangerous giver. Pastor taught us, be a dangerous giver. A servant of God said, to eat is to die. What God has given us to sow, if you eat it, basically you die. It will not increase. One King, one king 17 speaks about a widow in Sarapath who had a little with her. She and her son planned to make a meal to eat and die. The prophet Elijah told her to make a small cake for him first, that if she would do that, she and her son would live. So be a dangerous giver. If you hold on to what God has asked you to let go, it will kill you. To eat is to die, to give is to live. Grace increases, lastly, in humility, when you have a sense of helpless before the Lord and when, when you have generosity. 1 Kings 3 says, Solomon, the grace of God, in 1 Kings 3, speak about um, so Solomon, David's son. We read that the grace of God, wished, by the grace of God, wisdom increased in Solomon. And wh when did this happen? When Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. Then that night God said to Solomon, what shall I give you? When he offered to the Lord what he had to give, the Lord visited him. You can never outgive God. You know I'm saying you never outgive God. Whenever you are generous, Hallelujah, grace of God. The Bible says, "What even what He did not ask, God gave Him." That's what grace will happen. Even things you don't even ask, God adds to you. Long life, riches, everything. Hallelujah. So this is the first week of October. A grace. Increase in your life. It's an increase of grace. Every other increase comes. Increase of health, 
increase of wealth, increase of good relationships, but you have to first increase in life, increase in uh, grace first. Never fight grace because the moment you are doing that, you are fighting God. I said you cannot separate God and grace. You fight grace, you are fighting God. You want to lift up, glorify Jesus, you have to be submit and surrender to the Lord. Hallelujah. More of Jesus, you want more of grace, you need. Otherwise, you'll be stagnated in your pace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So to this morning, if you have failed to recognize the grace, ask the Lord for forgiveness. And if you have fought people who are walking in grace, ask the Lord for forgiveness. Never fight with people who are walking in grace. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes in prayer. Father, this morning, we thank you, Lord, for gathering all of us together, Lord. We want to approach the throne of grace with boldness knowing that we shall find mercy and of grace of help in the time of need. Father, we thank you to anoint our hearts with fresh oil, anoint our thoughts with fresh oil. Hallelujah, Thawi, Stotra. Increase us, help us to increase in grace. Help us to bring, come into that place of helplessness, Lord. Wherever us, we are lacking, Lord, we ask you forgiveness, remove those lacks. We are helpless, without you we can do nothing, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Any play, every place that we are challenged, we feel that we are isolated. We are fighting alone. Sorry, Lord, for not acknowledging your grace. Help us to walk in your divine, supernatural grace for ease. Hallelujah, Lord. Let it be a grace for ease, Lord. And this October, let it be a grace for ease, Lord. Let it increase in grace through the knowledge of God. Help us to know that you want to fill us, Lord, in the overflowing power of grace. We pray for grace, Lord. Grace to fill every home. Increase them, Lord, in your grace. Hallelujah. Increase them in your love for you, Lord. Increase them in worship for you, Lord. Increase them in wisdom, Lord. Oh, we, are, we want to be generous to you. We want to humble ourselves. We want to be generous, Lord. We want to be helpless, Lord. Hallelujah. Before you, Lord. So that the timely help, timely visitation will come upon our life. I come in the church into your hands. I declare timely help and timely visitation upon each and every one in the name of Jesus. Visit our homes. Visit our lives. Visit our health. Visit everything in need, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor as I bless your people. In the name of the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the Holy Spirit. Some of you, somebody who is watching me is fighting that same demon. The Lord said you are going to be free from that this morning. In the name of the Lord, fighting that same trouble. God is delivering you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Father. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. We enforce your victory. Upon every life this morning, Father. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.